Boy and I, a chachi. Just starting to feel in to the body, tokosha i. When we feel overwhelmed in these moments, tokosha i chataki. And really, in this specific transmission here, it's confusion. It's as if we can sense some kind of energy around us. It's making us feel uncomfortable. And yet because there's so little, let's say, data, like I don't know what this is in relation to at all, it can start to feel very confining, tokoshai, because there's a sense that I need to find a way out of this, and yet I don't even know what this is, so where do I start? Okay, so let's come into the body. Yeah. It's like the body is saying, yes, there's something here. Please come and take a look at this. And in this moment, I almost get this sense of like showing up at someone's door like they have an emergency, right? And it's like, oh, thank goodness you're here. This is what it feels like to drop into the body, to come in here, to be present with what the body is experiencing right now. Okay, so... And it feels a bit like having a haunting or a ghost problem. So it's as if this energy has always been here. It's just making itself more known. It's bubbling up to the surface here. Or we have the capacity to be more aware of it now as something that is not truly a part of our core. The kasha as we become more refined and more sensitive. So, to also acknowledge the fact that it may feel like there's more and more things coming up or more and more moments of discomfort in the body energetically, and yet it's because of the level of refinement that has been reached. Actually, I'm hearing that has arrived. Coming into the heart and feeling into the lower abdomen, so the sacral range here. There are equal parts like anxiety and fear about dropping in here, but also, oh my goodness, it feels so good to finally come in here. Like I've been waiting to do this, yet in the past it was almost like I couldn't, it was forbidden. And now there's like this funny kind of sense of like guilty pleasure about coming in this range here in the sacral it's like see i knew i always belonged in here that i had the right to access this range and yet it was anytime we went down here to our true sacral energy it was a threat to the things around us so coming in here now, the Hokoshai, communing with the truth of what you are. And allowing this to be communicated into your brain. And let's also start to shift this perspective that the brain is your ally, as long as you are directing it into the framework to take its cues from your sacral, from your truth, from your knowing. Good, so there's a clearing through the nasal passages here. We've been feeling this for quite a while. There's been strange pressure in and out of the fields, almost like these constant but kind of fleeting head cold feelings. And now this pressure at the brainstem, okay. The cellular tissues, 
of the brain chuckles. Allowing the light to come into the front of the forehead. No longer fearing your energetic field. No longer fearing communication with your energetic field. Because this is something, it's like a trait that we learned in childhood to resist and fear the energetic communications because our original exposure or expression of it uh, got us into hot water. Yes, clearing the grief out of the top of the heart, the masculine heart range with this. <sighs> wow, so many tears here. These anchors that start to come in in relation to the relationship, the quote, taking space, allowing for clearing. These fears that drop in and hook into the shoulders, causing stress and tension. It's a reflection of old relationship dynamics. It's like it's a sequence. So let's start to look at this because as we feel into the pain of these anchors, it starts to activate into the high heart where we could feel this grief beginning to release. Okay. So let's see if we can explain this properly. The wounding and the sense of this confusion, right? Like there's a fog in the field. As it begins to clear, as we learn to connect into our clear sacral energy, the field starts to activate as it recognizes its ability to communicate. If there is a relationship that comes in, it's like it triggers almost this sense of almost like a lockdown or an Armageddon feeling because it's almost like it loops. How do I explain this properly? It's like there is another set of clearing that has to happen. So I'll just refer to the childhood energies um, that we became familiar with as karmic, right? Like ancestral karmic ranges. There's another layer or level similar like this, jokusha, like deeply encoded wounding that arises when we start to connect in a different way. So for example, through intimate partnership, it's like a different range of wounding that gets triggered. So we just want to start to settle the field because the human impulse is, okay, it's the relationship that is causing the problems in life now when in actuality, it's going into a deeper level of energetic it's not that it's deeper, it's that it's been buried deeper. Because so many lifetimes it's been about survival, it's been about the family dynamic or the family dysfunction or the family of origin energies, right? And it's rare that we were able to extend beyond to establish that higher range of connection. Actually what I hear is like higher dimensional connection or a higher dimension of connection good and this affects into the solar plexus because then it triggers the sense of wanting to stay safe and it routes us back into it's like the old childhood wounding behaviors then so it's like this looping that happens that brings us right back to the karmic 
ranges. So it almost creates this feeling that I can never be in a relationship because when I try, it triggers my old family shit. Is, is kind of how it feels through the human. And actually, what it allows us to do is to almost vaporize um, it's like the sense of ownership that the family or the ancestral lineage seems to have over the field and thus the human body it's like this feeling almost of like if I want to go off and get married and the mother's like no you can't you have to stay home and take care of the household it's this feeling that you cannot move beyond the family of origin and so the relationship will trigger this energy and yet there's a feeling of wanting to attribute this pain and suffering to the relationship itself and pull back from the relationship or feel that we are unable to be in relationship and yet what we're doing again is it's like unlacing a deeper layer of attachment through the family of origin okay so this is really good and it's deep within the solar plexus here it's like i almost see ribbons woven into the bottom ribs and they look very beautiful like it's almost like a um like these young maidens celebrating an engagement and yet there's a weird sense that almost like there has to be permission from the mother to be released into the relationship or something like this. And it never, because it's so subconscious, it almost never happens properly. That the daughter, let's say, we, these are, you know, the feminine and masculine ranges. So there's this sense of the daughter moving off to create her own family, which then will be its own kind of entity let's say that will no longer feed the family of origin and there's a fear on the let's say the the mother the matriarchal kind of head of household range okay it makes me feel a bit sick here okay so And also perhaps where the mother is subconsciously projecting that she was never fully able to feel separate or individuated from the family of origin to carry on a like a clean and clear break in terms of being fully in her own energetic range and building from there. Okay, yeah, feeling this in the left solar plexus here, just below the rib. So honoring now this ability to take this space, Chohoya Shahi here, to come in, to acknowledge, to feel this, to release this. What a gift here. Cho. It's really not relationship that is so challenging. It is the and to some degree, we, we know this and we understand this, and yet it's showing so clearly here. It's where the attachments from the family are still vying for life force. So this kind of awful sense that we really never fully let go of things in our life to be their own separate creation where we still hold on in a very kind of dependent way fear-based a fear-based way rather than letting go with love or still feeling connected but through the range of love that we acknowledge the love connection that it is there as support and by support we mean that each party recognizes the other's ability to function 
on its own, as its own range, as its own entity. It is capable of learning and growing without unhealthy attachment. So where we are coming into this now energetically, and into this wider range collectively where we can see past systems, past patterns that don't truly serve freedom. On all levels. Feeling the toxicity of this in the energetic so in the glandular fields, takashai, the energetic exchange within the body, choro kosha i chakai. This toxic arrival, this toxic arousal, as we come deeper into the cellular matrix of the lived human experience, partnering beyond the original family the we'll call it the original grouping of souls that's often in our family of origin where we find that sense of security even if it is dysfunctional it becomes the signature that we relate to it has a very unique flavor or feeling to it when we need to go off and develop our own sense of connection through different interactions different exchanges different connections where we can become confused Longing to maintain that original signature, even if it is distorted. Jehoia, this loyalty. Okay. Taho kosha i. Loyalty to the dysfunction within, loyalty to the toxicity within, because it's actually within our fields anyway. Taho kosha i, Jehoia. So it's almost like we are so comfortable with this level of dysfunction and distortion even though to establish a healthier range of connection would be most beneficial for us and healthier it's almost perceived through the human as being a threat right so it's like i already have this disease of the family of origin and i'm going looking for something that would essentially be in contrast to that which would be beneficial and yet it's perceived the opposite that whatever I'm moving to establish is actually a threat to the original system. It's a threat to the original distortion and dysfunction. That's how it's experienced then in the energy field and in the body. And it affects our sense of well-being. Oftentimes, even when we are moving in the right direction, it feels absolutely awful and sickening and this is where it's so challenging to feel and recognize that we are actually working to establish new patterns new energetic connections which would be more beneficial in the long run and yet everything in the body fights against it so in some ways we feel attacked and this is also at the nervous system level and this is really what drives the the challenges in relationship um, that we think are about communication and yet really it's a energetic i'll say incompatibility <laughs> with the original system and for good re like it should be incompatible with the original system right because we're trying to establish health here and yet it's felt in the body as an alarm. And so we go with that. Okay, good. So bringing the source light into the neck, into the glands here. 
that we start to perceive these flare-ups as deep clearing, deep expressions of toxicity, e deep purging of dysfunction, that we celebrate and embrace this chokushai And yet, of course, not wielding this onto our fellow humans. As it is said.